So let's go into lock state of head then. And I think we need the password because uh, in this case the SD card doesn't work. Yep. Impossible to hack. A in nine seven six eight two two one K. So that's the man who shot his subordinates. Andrew Lark. We finally landed on this rock. Nothing to write home about, other than rocks, dust and more dust. How ironic to reach our final destination only to learn it was nothing but a long, useless journey. I screwed up big time on Ambrosia and, if I ever believed in karma, this would have been the right payback. I need to motivate what is left of the crew. I've ordered them to write daily records and maybe a little scavenger hunt will keep them busy. We might find some trace of earlier life. This will be hard to explain when we get back home. Not really a warm welcome. The crew is complaining about sudden headaches, but I think they're just not used to stress. I've ordered Barth to run another planet-wide scan. All readings were within normal limits, so we should be safe. Yeah, they trusted technology and uh, that was their death sentence. We're screwed. Our data channels with Julia have died. Both reported this and we've decided to keep this information classified until he fixes it. Hopefully it's just a minor glitch, but we can't send any medical data for the analysis. I'm really fed up with that hag, Cynthia. She's getting on my nerves and on top of that. I have a feeling she might be involved with all our little accidents. I voted Pavel to look into the crew sickness to get an unbiased view. I've placed Lee in medical quarantine. I have a strong suspicion that she has been poisoned, but I need to keep the remaining crew safe in case she encountered some kind of an alien disease. Still no contact with the probe and Cynthia is suspiciously snooping around. I'm positive she's behind all this, but why? Lee is dead. Her last moments were terrible and she begged me to end her pain. I eased her last moments and informed the crew of her death. I am calling an emergency meeting tomorrow. I need to get more proof about Cynthia's involvement in the poisoning. <laughs> it's the fourth day and our data channels are still dead. The one who created the obstacle must have been pretty smart because Both can't find the modification. However, he told me that the data is obviously coming to and from Julia, so the Gemma is somewhere in the station. I've ordered Both to create datapad hacking software. I'm sure we'll find the truth in Cynthia's datapad. We must do this discreetly, so she won't suspect anything. Today, I accused Cynthia of the crew poisoning, and her born in her own stew. While her motive isn't clear, she's the only possible culprit. She has been acting strange ever since we left Ambrosia. Why didn't Yamabushi assign Alexander Brown to this mission, like I requested? She's smart, easygoing and a personal backer of mine. Meanwhile, the rest of the crew is cooperating. A woman called Alexander Brown? Is it maybe Alexandra? What he? What they mean? Hm. I still don't want to alert the, cr the crew about our sev severed communication, as it would be foolish to destroy their morale. They still believe we can return to the probe and fly back home. <laughs> I am no longer positive about that. Alex has died. He was one of our best men. That witch will pay. We'd set up a little trap and lure her out of the station tonight. We have to make our move now. She's recently developed a very intimate friendship. Which is, of course, Scott, who helped her. I think all our problems are finally solved and I'm sure that our luck will change for the better. But I feel so sick today. 
She probably left me with a little parting gift. We need to recheck all the nutrients for thallium. Which was ultimately pointless because the radiation was all around them. Shit, her datapad didn't confirm anything. Was she innocent after all? What the hell is going on here? Are we cursed? Barth's condition is getting worse. What will I do without him? He's going insane and there's nothing I can do to help him. He's obsessed with some kind of experiment and fends off all my questions rather violently. There's not much we can do. The data channels are dead and Barth has lost his mind. He probably ingested heavy doses of the poison affecting his brain. And then he destroyed our hovercraft. Not that it matters since we won't be able to connect with Julia. I was yelling at him, but he told me that he needed the parts for his experiment. This is madness. I am feeling really sick now. I told Barth my datapad password, but it was simply a gesture. I know he's going to die soon. We all are. I'm not sure why I still keep writing this log as there's nothing to say except we are all slowly dying. This can't be right. Balth rushed in today with a wild look in his eyes and started raving. He seems near death. But if his handmade Geiger counter is correct, we have been exposed to insane levels of lethal radiation since day one. If he's right, there's nothing that can save us. But how could we have missed this? All our devices are synchronized with a probe, so that must be sabotaged by one of us. And the living conditions on this planet were estimated to be great. Someone must have tampered with Julia. Barth has died. There's no reason to go on. I would check all the server data one more time to see if I can find the culprit. I'm still convinced that Cynthia was somehow involved. Maybe she was just careful and faked her datapad entries not to be caught. Well, what did she have to win from it? So she planned this from the beginning? I'm going to end this madness tonight. I will send Scott to patrol the perimeter and deal with him later. As for Pavel, it will be better if he is asleep. Our expedition has failed. And that's the last entry. There is only one data pad we're missing now. That's Scott's. But luckily we have the hacking device. So let's see. God have to tell us. Everybody was told to keep writing our daily records. I guess the captain just wants to keep our morale up, but after Ambrosia and subsequent events our expedition can possibly be much bigger failure. His orders have resulted in one cryo jailed, which is likely Rachel, one missing in action, twelve dead and only seven of us still here. How is he ever going to explain that? Today was uneventful, apart from the fact that we are not feeling well. I think that the last month was just too much and none of us were prepared to endure such stress. 
I'm really glad we have Julia on board because the ship's computer is optimistic and always boosting our mood. She let me watch some of my most beloved childhood cartoons last night. Scary how well she knows me. Or is it just listed in my personal data? Either way, these little things are what keep me going. Not much to do here. This planet is terribly boring. I heard that this was supposed to be a primary target, but in comparison to Ambrosia and Zenobia, this place is a wasteland. I was sparring with Pavel today. He's an extremely talented fighter, but it's obvious that the expedition has taken a lot from him. He seems to be losing the incredible energy he had at the beginning. Nonetheless, I can't believe it's impossible to pull a good lever on him. Always amazes me how he gets away. We've decided to spar often to kill time. It's unlikely we will get any real task, and if anyone can benefit from this place, it's maybe only Bath. Though he doesn't look terribly interested either. Pavel was unable to spar today. Something is in the air, or we've eaten something bad. It looks like the entire crew is poison. Cynthia told me that she believes there's some kind of virus flying around, but Julia's analysis results were all negative. I noticed a red color on her skin, as if she had a sunburn, and she also complained about heavy stomach cramps. Strangely enough, Lee was complaining about the very same thing. Lee is getting worse. She asked me to help her as she was unable to get into her dorm. I carried her in there and brought her some nutrients. She was very thankful and I suspected that she fears she will die soon. I comforted her and told her that it's just stress and she will soon be alright. Then she showed me how her hair is falling out in large clumps. What the hell is this? I've never heard about anything like it and I wonder if there's some untraceable alien illness involved. Lee has died. I am not sure what to think about that. She was always so nice to everyone here. Why her? I got information that her samples were sent up to Julia and not even our advanced probes laboratory can find anything. Today, I don't feel well, but it's nothing in comparison with how Lee must have felt in her last hours. We've been ordered on a strict nutrient-only diet to prevent possible poisoning. I've spent the evening with Cynthia, who believes the captain is behind this strange sickness. She's just paranoid, but I lent her my card so she can snoop around, uh, snoop about if she wants to. There's nothing she can find in our dorm anyway, so there's no harm in it. Everyone is feeling quite sick. I tried to spar once again with Pavel, but we were so exhausted there was no reason to continue. I've noticed that the crew, or what remains of us, has split into factions fighting each other. I want to stay away from this insanity as much as possible. Captain Lark escalated his long-standing conflict with Cynthia by publicly blaming her for poisoning us. One of his proofs was that he found out that she has been in our dorm. I wanted to say something in her defense, but Cynthia didn't let me. Is she going to just accept such a mental beating? Pavel blames the captain for not solving the situation and... That was basically the end of our meeting today. Alex has died today. Another great friend of mine is now a victim of this failed mission. I spent the night with Cynthia, again. She was talking about her childhood and about Rachel. I don't understand why Rachel was cryo-jailed either, and ironically she would be the only one who could get us out of here. We're really getting sick now, and I won't be able to last much longer if we don't find a cure. He killed Cynthia. I can't believe he's that insane. That's it for me. I became quite close to her these last days and I know she was innocent. She would never have lied to me. I've spent the last three days doing nothing but mundane things. I have been thinking a lot about Cynthia and now I understand that we are all going to die here. I feel much worse and I know I have finally caught the sickness too. It became obvious that killing Cynthia solved nothing. Nobody's allowed to talk about that, as if it would matter anyway. To 
day, I coughed up a lot of blood. Will I survive the night? Up until today, we had only one chance to survive. Return to the probe. But for some reason, Captain Locke wouldn't allow it. Now we will never get back, because Bath Krilov destroyed the hovercraft. He's going to die very soon and probably just didn't want anyone else to survive. Pavel wanted to kill him, but I talked him out of it. There's no point. Not now. Without the captain's clearance code, we would never get on board Julia. And I know how close he is to Bath. Bath has died. Okay. The minor medic. Gonna explain later. Bath has died. No one is left but Captain Locke, Pavel and me. There's not much we can do, except die. And yeah, it looks like he was killed, like he was shot by the captain later when he came back. It must have been his jacket that we found at the entrance. And what just popped up was uh, the information that we can now do a mind matic That is um, something that helps us figure out what has happened um, and put the events in a logical order. So this will help us to see what has happened here on Xenophone. This is the sequence of events and you can see it's always dark blue on top, purple in the middle and light purple at the bottom. So let's see. What makes it a bit harder is that not all of the clues we have are really going to be used. I'll just sort it a bit. Before we go on. Oh, that was wrong. Again, that they landed on Xenophon. I think I remember parts of it because I did it before. Okay, the probe. Which was that was pretty early on that the probe stopped responding and from everything went downhill from there. the first one to die from radiation poisoning and afterwards it was uh, I think it was Alex yeah and then, then they shot Cynthia Cleveland only not sure whether it was Andrew Locke or Bath Krillo let's try this if it's not correct it won't count as salt. The 
last two people to die, while before Locke, were obviously Pavel and Scott. And the only person who can have done that. Oh, wait a second. I don't actually know how they killed her. Whoops, that was wrong. It's light blue. It should be light blue. So, is that correct? happened is uh, they landed and the probe stopped responding and then they started dying of radiation poisoning. They suspected, at least Andrew Lark suspected Cynthia Cleveland killed her and it didn't change anything. And at that point Barth Krilov started to take things in his own hands, found excessive radiation, but that was no use anymore. He died, and the others would have died soon, so Andrew Luck killed the, the last crew members and then himself. Which begs the question, why did the probe not warn them? Ventilation system once provided. According to Cynthia's data pad, a camera should still be hidden in here. If we are lucky. It's still there! The camera no longer works, but I'm recovering its memory card. Let's take it to the analytics station to see what we can get from it. Correlation with the internal fingerprint database reveals a clear match with Cynthia Cleveland. Sure, she installed the camera. code for the locker, which is 5, 4, 9, 2, 3, 7. There's another card lying in this locker. That is the station master card. We might be able to extract some really useful data with it. and some samples. This is interesting. Bullseye. Blueprints of a high-range solar system scanner. What's that for? 
If we build the scanner, we might be able to leave this dreadful place. But the only place where we can build this is back on the probe, so we'll have to return to it. where we find the blueprint. We have to we have to build this schematic. But the parts well I'll just show you. parts can't all be in the orientation that they have here because they need to be connected. We see that this uh, has an L shape and uh, in order to connect them these bits need to be connected as well. And another difficulty is that we don't have this um, the, the amount of um, cable tiles needed to make exactly this connection. That's what I first tried. We have zero straight lines, but lots of bends, so let's see how this works. This has to be connected in the way that's shown here. The device is following in this order, but it doesn't need to be the same amount of power lines. Yeah, these puzzles get actually quite hard towards the end. I might cheat at some point. We'll see. Let's just put all the parts out. out and uh, have to make connections. the solar system in which we are. Right now we are here at Xenophone. So that's the Xenobia, the planet that they mentioned where some disaster had happened. Let's see what else there is. Phydros. And a planet named Elpis. Yeah, I'd say I will decide on which planet to visit next time. Ending the episode for here. Thanks for watching. <laughs>